Okay, continuing on. So now what we've got to do is we've got to draw the tips of the pyramids, but we need to be able to locate those tips um, exactly where they need to go. So what I've done here is I've put, I've basically taken the width of the larger ellipse and I've placed these lines in the middle between each step and I've taken that width and dragged it down. So I've got that width going in between each step, okay? So if you have a look at this bottom one, here's the width here and there, which runs halfway through the step here and here. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of sketching that curve in now. See, I've got the curves here and here, and I'm basically just sketching in a curve that travels directly halfway between those. Okay, and I'm not completing that ellipse. I'm just sketching in the part of it that I need. So the base of the pyramid is like facing this way. So I know that it's gonna come somewhere along here, that the tip of the pyramid is gonna end somewhere there on that curve, right? So I'm gonna draw those curves in. Um, so here, here's the next one here. So I've got the width there. I've got it traveling between each step. And it's very easy now, because we've already constructed the perspective, it's very easy to kind of just predict where that curve is going to go. Because if you have a look at the pattern, the curves travel basically directly halfway between each other. So this part of this curve here and this one, if I wanted to draw this one, this part lies halfway between there and there and it would also lie halfway between there and there. So knowing that, it's very easy to predict where it travels now. And you could do the smart thing and you know make less work for yourself and only draw that middle ellipse and then draw the large ellipses in between. That's another way you could do it. Um, but I'm trying to do as many construction lines as I can so that you just understand the geometry of the spe uh, perspective a little more. And I'm only sketching in this part of the curve of the ellipse because this base is kind of facing this way. So I know the tip of the pyramid is going in this direction, so I only sketch that part. Here's the next part here. This base is facing more to the left. So I'm just kind of sketching the curve in between this one and this one. Just kind of going like that. Gonna go that way somewhere. This one's facing away from us now. It's beginning to turn away. So now I need to sketch the curve going this way. I'm having a look between here and here. So that would be coming along that direction somewhere. So the thing about good drawing skills is that you only want to draw the parts that you need. And honestly, that's kind of just down to experience more than anything else. This one is facing away from us as well. So, um, you know, if we have a look at this here, you can see the curve is kind of going to be somewhere along there. But as I was saying before, you only want to sketch the lines that you truly need because it just keeps the drawing cleaner that way while still being fairly technical. So this one's facing away from us, but it's starting to turn left this way, going that direction. So having a look at this curve and that curve, there's the middle there. It's kind of going to be doing that. So yeah, by only drawing the lines that you need, you keep the drawing clean and it's more readable as well. When you start drawing too many lines, uh, it becomes a very confusing mess of line work. So, just something to be aware of. And that's the thing, it, it, it's definitely a more technical approach to perspective, but it, it's not quite a technical drawing. Technical drawings have a lot of measurements, they have a lot of lines. We're, we're doing more constructive drawing. We're just constructing the parts that we need 
to get the job done. Okay, so this one's kind of facing towards us again now. We're seeing that bit there, so um, let's have a look. So it starts there, so I'll sketch that curve that runs in between this one and that one. But yeah, you know, you, you could definitely use less lines in a drawing like this if you planned it properly. Uh, like I said before, you could take the middle ellipse and use that for each step. And then this larger ellipse, you would just draw that in between each step and just reduce some of those line works. So, you know, if you want to challenge yourself a bit more, you can definitely draw it that way. The, the more you draw, the more you learn. So then this curve is kind of doing that. And I know the pyramid is probably going to, the tip of the pyramid is going to end up somewhere along that curve there. Cool. So we got that sketched in. That's the thing, it makes the drawing look better when you use broken lines. It looks good. It's quite minimalistic. Um, well, I wouldn't say it's minimalistic. There's a lot of line work, but it just looks cleaner and it's more readable. Remember, more lines does not equal a better drawing. Um, in fact, a lot of the times you want to try and find ways to simplify it as much as you can to keep the drawing clean. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing. You see the small ellipse here? If you have a look at the bottom of the drawing, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to come in between each step. And I'm just going to sketch the curve that I think I need. So if I have a look at this base here, if I drag that vertical line down, I can kind of see what direction that's heading in. And I'm kind of just sketching that direction through. And with this base, because it's aligned on one of those 90 degree angles, this angle here, it, the, the tip of the pyramid is going to follow this direction. So I know it's going to lie somewhere there. And it hits the edge of that curve right there. That curve that I sketched in before hits it right there. And that is where I'm going to draw my pyramid. So yeah, this is a very different kind of drawing. It's like technical, but also trying to keep that line work as minimal as we can. And yeah, it's, it's quite a unique drawing. It's, you know, it's not too technical, but it's not too minimal. It's just right. I think that's what good draftsmanship is all about. As long as the viewer can understand what's happening, then in my eyes, it's a successful drawing. Okay, so let's have a look at the square above it. So the center of the base hits that smaller ellipse there. So I'm gonna draw that part of the curve in. I can kind of see what direction it's heading in. If I draw that tangent in there, it's kind of doing that. So I'm drawing from the center of that base, following this curve and that curve. Found the tip of the pyramid there. Let's keep going. 
So this one, let's have a look. I'm gonna draw a vertical line through this base and I'm just having a look at where it hits that small ellipse there and the one under it. So through the center of that base, I'm kind of duplicating that part of the curve like that, having a look at where that tangent is sort of taking me. It's taking me in a direction going this way, it seems. Hits the edge at about there. I think there's quite a few different ways you could draw this structure. Another way you could find out what direction the tip of the pyramid is going is if you drew an ellipse that hits tangent with the base and then try to find the minor axis of that ellipse. And that minor axis will also give you that same angle, provided that you draw it well. I don't really do it that way because I think that's kind of hard. But if you're a very good draftsman and your ellipses are really good and really clean, that's another way you could do it. it coming to life. So we've got this space which is beginning to turn away from the viewer now. Uh, let's have a look at where it falls. So the top of the center is there. We've got a curve there. I'm going to duplicate that curve in the middle and follow that angle. Looks like it's traveling in a direction like so. Um, and then there's my curve of the outer ellipse there. So I'm drawing that angle to meet that. And I always, when I draw these kind of structures, I always work from bottom to top, but you could work from top to bottom. You could start from the center and do it that way. Um, for me, it's just easy to visualize if I draw from the bottom to the top. So I'm just draw I'm just connecting all those points to the tip. Like so. There we go. All right, let's have a look. So this one is kind of hitting that tangent at quite an extreme angle. You can see that curve of the tip of the pyramid that I've sketched in there, so that's where it's gonna end. Kind of taking me See. Yeah, it's kind of taking me in an angle like that. So you can't really see much of the tip of this one, which makes sense because it is facing away from us. the center, bottom of the center. So the curve is doing something like that. Which means 
my minor axis is coming this way. There's that curve that I sketched in between that one and that one. I'm going to draw that angle in. That's the thing, your angles don't have to be absolutely perfect. You just have to make sure you're working them out correctly, that's all. If you spend some time thinking about where the angles are going to go, and the more time you spend constructing the drawing as well, that's another thing, the more time you spend constructing the drawing, the better results you're going to get. So I've got that one happening there. See that? So it's coming to life. Um, so, got the center of the base here, that curve is traveling that way. This one, so it's this, this one's beginning to flatten out a bit more. So, sketching that angle through the center, because you can see the tangents are doing this. So, sketching that similar angle through the center. Um, having a look at where I drew the curve, which is this one here. So I'm just looking for those broken curves. That's what's helping me visualize this a little better. And that's how you keep, that's another reason why I draw broken curves in between the steps is because it just keeps the drawing a lot cleaner for me so I know exactly where I'm going. If I, this curve here, if I drew that as a complete ellipse, um, it would kind of just get mixed up with all the others and that's just not convenient, you know? So prioritizing that line work, that's what this lesson is also about. It's a very good skill to have, especially when you start drawing more complicated structures. You can see me drawing the tip of that pyramid in now. So having a look at that tangent there, this is also sort of flattened out. Here's a tangent of that center, so it's kind of traveling in an angle similar to that. There's that broken curve in between each step. If I extend that angle to meet that from the center to there. Oh, excuse me. No. And that's the last one. So there's a few different ways you could have approached that lesson. Um, And I think this pyramid, uh, I can't actually tell if this part of the pyramid is in front of this. No, 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 this one, yeah, this corner is in front of the slope, yep. Okay, sorry, I just had a moment. Um, yeah, there's a few different ways that you could approach this task. And as I said before, you can simplify this even further. So next time, if you attempt this task, maybe for each step, I'm just gonna draw this in uh, very quickly.
let's say that's each step there. So these sort of square steps for the bases, you could draw those in and then the larger lips, you could draw halfway between that and then that way you could simplify the drawing even more. Okay, so instead of drawing the large ellipse on the same steps as the other ellipses, you could sort of alternate between them. You'd still get the same result, really. But I think for demonstration purposes, it's good to just draw, draw a few extra lines so that you know exactly uh, what the structure is, really. Um, so these sort of lines that I drew, these sort of cross sections that I've done in the pyramids, Let's complete those. Let's very lightly draw lines on the edge of the bases, traveling to the tip of the pyramid. So we're drawing those cross sections in. I need a different pencil. That one's not very sharp. So drawing the cross sections of the pyramids in. just because it's a good habit to do so. And the sections that are meant to be invisible behind the structure, just use broken lines. Just use broken lines traveling to the tips. Okay. always a good habit to draw cross sections wherever you can. They help you understand the form a little more and they're very useful when it comes to constructive drawing. So yeah, this, uh, this lesson's probably been a bit more complex than some of the other ones that we've tackled so far, but practice makes perfect. And the more you do it, the better you get. And it's a great exercise. It's a fantastic exercise because it just improves your understanding of 3D space a little more. So to finish this drawing off, this is just finishing touches now. I'm going to darken all visible lines. And that just kind of shows the structure off a little bit more. And anything that's, that the viewer is not supposed to be able to see I'm just going to leave those lines alone.
Another way you could have done this exercise, if you were to draw the plan view into perspective, and then from the plan, you could drag those lines down onto your ellipses. So that's another way you could have done it. Um, but I don't like to do that. I try to construct as accurately as I can in perspective without the use of the plan, if that makes sense. Um, Cause I'm always trying to keep that drawing as clean as possible. And I'm always trying to think outside the box and you know, different ways that I could be able to complete the task. Um, so what you might like to do at this point is you might like to just shade in all of the planes that are in shadow. So all of the planes that are facing down, you could just, you know, just hatch it in with some light strokes. And I, I would just leave this as a sketch, so I wouldn't try to render it too much. I would honestly just try to keep it pretty simple because you don't want the shadows or the shades um, to compete with the line work too much. So I'm hatching in very softly right now. I'm, I'm literally just using the weight of the pencil and I'm just breaking up my strokes a little bit. And in aerial perspective, any shadows that are closer to the viewer will get darker. So you could probably darken this tip of the pyramid that's coming towards the viewer. Um, same with this one. And just keep it very close to the tip. Same down here. And you know, just doing a bit of light shading like what I'm doing just helps to show off that three-dimensional structure a little more. Okay. So that looks pretty cool. Um, you could also shade in some of the side planes. So what could we do? Maybe we could shade in this one. So again, just some light hatching strokes for now. And same with this plane. This could also be in shadow. But yeah, if you are going to do any shading, keep it very soft, keep it very light. Don't ruin the integrity of the line drawing. Because the line drawing is quite, it's quite beautiful in its own right. Um, this plane as well would be in shadow. If you have a look at the slope and that angle and compare it to this one, you will see that that should be in shadow as well. Let's have a look what else, that one.
and perhaps this one as well. Definitely this one. And this one is probably maybe very close to being in shadow, but not quite. So maybe a few half tones would do for that. So just making that slightly darker than the light shapes. And that one would be in light and these, place, uh, these planes facing this way would all be in light and this one. So yeah, that'd be it, I reckon. So there you go. That just shows off the structure a bit more. Um, but yeah, you know, if you are going to do shading, just keep it very minimal. Don't, um, I think I prefer it without shading. <laughs> but anyway, it's good practice.